It is episode four of the 1080 Outdoors podcast, the rut edition. Jed killed a buck this past week with his trad bow. He also killed a Wyoming mule deer since the last time we saw you guys. We go over that. And we go over which days in the next week you should really focus on hunting. And if you haven't taken your days off, we give you kind of insight on what days you should take off. And if you have days to hunt, we give you insight on how to hunt them, where to hunt them, and when to hunt them. Thanks for joining episode four of the tenny outdoors podcast it's taylor here with jed what's up jed how we doing man doing it's real been well. a good it's been a good fall yeah it has been it's, a good it's fall. been a really good year 2018 is yeah. really rocking well before we get in um anyone that follows us too much will know that jed did arrow a buck in wisconsin uh, the other night but we'll get in that a little bit from the last time, it's been since October 6th since we released a podcast, so let's go, um, you were going to Wyoming that last time, so what happened out in Wyoming? Um, some good stuff, we made it, uh, no troubles, morning number one, it was going to be a power two to maybe two and a half day hunt, uh, morning number one, I got on to a buck, mule deer, I had a mule deer tag, I got on to a mule deer buck that was running with a few does I spotted him from about a mile away and tried to catch up with him didn't before the uh, snowstorm started Um, and that was probably the snow probably started at uh, 10 30 11 o'clock and did not get done blowing until midnight so there was not a whole lot of hunting happening yeah, that was a weekend. It actually snowed in Wisconsin too. I think it snowed in a yep. lot, a lot of like northern states. Yep. Um, so then early the next morning, we were driving out to. I was going to a um, place that I uh, that we spotted a buck a couple times during our archery hunt, and uh, on the way there, spotted a buck in the snow not too far from the road so we just kept driving uh got to where the buck couldn't see us anymore i hopped out of the truck put a pretty short stock on it like it almost felt like cheating um i only had to hop over one little point and there he was standing feeding at about 175 yards and that was that isn't it crazy that you you went all the way out there in September, only person had to take out, then went all the way back out there, and then bam, it's like it driving along each other, something slapping you in the face. Yeah. Like, I think if I wouldn't have went on like a six mile hike the day before, I would feel worse about shooting that buck as easily as I did. But Well, I'm a total believer. That's that's exactly like, like turkey hunting. I think about it in, in bow hunting too somewhat, but like, if you... If you have e- enough shitty experiences i really do believe that at some point it evens out like hunting karma is a thing i yeah. do think that yeah and like that's a perfect example of it because you like nine people would have drove out to wyoming for just a weekend well you did some people aren't as insulted by an unfilled tag as i am i guess <laughs> that's true so uh update on canada there's some whitetail action up there huh yeah, um, so Jake and Don are up there making me really jealous right now. Um, sending back sporadic trail camera pictures, well, pictures of trail camera pictures and uh, updates. They got the bait stations all refilled, hung a couple stands. You wouldn't mind turning that on vibrate, would you? It's my fucking computer. Um,. Don sent me a, a picture that he took from a four-wheeler of a buck this morning. Which we're still wondering why that was not shot. Yeah, really confused. Like, literally sent back a message as soon as I got it. Haven't heard from him since. That was at 8.30 or 9.30 this morning. Um... Yeah, no moose on, on trail cam up there yet. Uh, a few tracks. 
on our property. Um, a few wolf pictures, which is pretty exciting because you can buy over-the-counter wolf tags, which I currently possess, and hopefully get up there and... You actually you have a wolf tag right mm -hmm. now? Yep. Nice. Yep. Hopefully get up there and call one in or spot and stalk one, however, however have to make it happen. be pretty cool to have one of them on. All right. So probably a majority of people listening, moms, are mom and dads. Thanks for listening, guys. Oh, wait, they don't even listen, do they? <laughs> Abe Beckstrand, one confirmed listener. <laughs> so we're going to dip into the whitetail because it is right. Our recording day right now is October 30th. I'm hoping that um, we get this thing live tomorrow. So, like, everyone that is ready to go on Halloween. So, let's dive into Jed's hunt from Sunday during the Packer game, which was October 29th. Jed, you have some history with October hunts before. Why don't you talk about your October 28th hunt of 2007? No, it was, uh, this year it was the 28th. Was it? Monday, okay, twenty eighth, yeah. So But my October twenty seventh history is October twenty seventh, two thousand seven. I shot my first buck ever with a bow that just happened to score uh net two hundred and two and four eighths inches. And um, there's not any good pictures of it. No. That was, uh, that was, well, there were a few. I, there, I remember, I remember some on a Facebook. few. There, there's, there's somewhere. Yeah. Just, I don't know where. There, I remember one of you, like, just holding it up between your mm -hmm. legs. In a, in a truck bed. Yeah. yeah. Cannot find that picture. But, uh. When you reacted to your Facebook, it wasn't on there? Yeah. What the fuck, man? Like, I remember those, like, on Facebook. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, so, I always <laughs> try and get out on my anniversary date. Uh, this year my uncle actually got married on my anniversary, so now him and I share an anniversary, but... But that was still a productive night. Yeah, it was. With your yeah. deer. That's so let's... A, that's an interesting segue. Right. Into... But let's go right into your... Well, we're going to talk about what hat, like why we hunted where we hunted when Jed got his deer, but let's just talk about your hunt because I think it's, it's kind of cool. It's... Yeah, it's really cool. Okay, so... Let, we'll, we're going to go into like the decision making process on why we did and what we did. Let's go like we're already in the tree. Let's go from there like straight replay of the hunt. I don't think we can do a straight replay of the hunt without. You want to go back background story right now? No, 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 not the background story. Just the getting into the woods part. Okay. Yeah. So we did a we did a hanging hunt out at my like one of my main prop my one of my main properties that I hunt, um, and. It, it unlike normal people that hang and hunt, we literally I attached a <laughs> <laughs> ratchet strapped a ladder stand, which it, it's not like it's not like crazy ladder, like old ladder stand that was in like Pro should have been in, probably in a dumpster, probably manufactured in the mid nineties, like tube, oh for sure I've never even steel. seen I've never even seen one like yeah, that. Have it, you? It, no, it's tube no. steel like like an old pool ladder kind of deal. That yeah, I got it from I got it from Donnie like. Yeah. He was like, he just like gave me some shit. And I was too <laughs> stupid to say no. It, I, it honestly works fine. Like it's not as sketchy as I, I did not know if it would be like, like even climbable, but we went with it. Yeah, it, it works. And it honestly carries well. Like it's. Yeah, it's strapped to your pack pretty so decent. So put that in a hang on and Jed carried a hang on, strapped it to my backpack. And we took off over the hill. Um, we'll get into like the area that we hunted in a little bit, but. Oh, I'd say forty minutes set up with everything. Noisy nightmare. We there's we, like blade. We, there's blatant trees and and like limbs on the edge of the field. Like we're getting no, we're getting no shooting lanes. And I had to like literally break off loud as and hell. Why? Why did you have to break them? Because for some reason we didn't have the saw that we normally have. I bought another one today. Still not sure where that thing ended up. But so I'm, I sk skinny out this branch limb with a knife limb maybe branch more like it with a knife that has like a two inch serrated part to it sawing like whittling breaking i mean just more noise than 
anybody would ever think they should ever make. He's like out on limbs to doing this. Like we're, I'm not kidding. You. We are literally breaking limbs. He's climbing out into trees. Everything and and we still only had after all that we I have like because I, I we put my stand facing the field because like I mean we'll, we'll yeah, let's go we might as well go on that we decided a little while ago we're gonna okay let's hang at the same height you know if a buck comes along like I have a couple bucks in that area which we'll get into in a little bit that I want to shoot um, that are really that are regular on the trail camera and I'm like there's tons of bucks that I don't get like Jed can shoot with his longbow because. There's very little opportunities to get a, a decent buck within 20 yards. And like Jed almost shot a fork the other night. So. Yeah, not a picky hunter. Let's not, just get that out of the way. Not picky with a longbow. I was, he was not going to be shooting a fork out there, but he could shoot like exactly what he shot, a three-and-a-half-year-old. Um, so we, we, we stuck my stand out facing this field. Still, after all that, had one or two shooting lanes. Like nothing great. And then Jed, we're the same level. We put the uh, tree arm in between us. So we're like, okay, if anything happens, we can easily switch. And and it really worked out perfectly. But so all that happens, 40 minutes, like 4.15 by the time we get out. We like left early, we thought. like We left before 3 mm-hmm. from the house. Mm-hmm. And God, I bet it was an hour then we were out there because we left before 3. Because I remember you saying like, oh my God, it's almost 3. Let's get going. And then me thinking, like, oh, it's not a big deal. It'll only be, like, 20 minutes to set up. <laughs> but uh, it had to have been a good hour then. So, we like, we get up there. We're in the tree. I finally get, I, I pull my bibs on. They aren't even, they aren't even zipped up anything. I sit down. So, I'm like, let's chill out. I turn around Jen. I'm like, hey, dude, like, chill. He's, like, over there pouting on his phone. I wasn't pouting. I, I call him pouting. irritated. He's very irritated. I said, listen, we're in the tree, aren't we? Like, let's chill out. Calm down. There's a thousand deer in this area. Yeah, so we'll be fine. From the time that we left your house, because it, it was like 2.50 when we left your house, and we got set up, and my first text message that I sent was, yep, two-person hanging hunt equals total fucking goat rope. That was at 3.43. Oh, it was before 4 then. Yep. I guess that deer was in front of us for a long time. Yep. Um. So, yeah, so solid hour from the house, which isn't ideal, obviously. No, but something to say, something to be said. We were in an area where I knew where the bedding was, and I knew we weren't inside of that. But I also knew, like, and it, it was high winds all day. So yeah, like, let's highlight that it was. It was extremely high winds earlier in the day, and it wasn't as high when we were setting up. But it was definitely enough it was, to like. It was fifteen plus. Yeah, so like that's. That was part of it too. Like, wh- I don't think we would have got away with all that if it would have been dead calm. Right? No way. So we sit up. I tell Jed to chill out, and I turn back around. I look down into a food plot that I have about seventy yards away, and I, I, I actually something caught my eye. I think it was it must have been a doe or some little fawn or something that shot across like way down in the woods. Because from where we are, you can see quite a ways, and the woods is pretty open around us. But there's bedding right below all the open parts. There's all treetops. And you, you you literally cannot step in this woods without busting out dull groups. So, and then I see a buck coming at us right along the edge of the field, walking on a road. And I turn to Jed and I'm like, nice buck. Let's, let's just make uh, this known that it's a logging road that he's talking about, not like a vehicle road. Yeah, yeah, logging road. Um and you know he here he comes we both ready i i had my bow in my hand and i literally said i will shoot that <clears throat> um just because i thought that it was a different buck yeah we, i think we both kind of thought that it was yeah. one of the two main ones when we first saw it yeah because we can't, it was walking just... sideways it had a lot it had good time length in it it looked nice so once he clears some brush i get a good binocular look at him as we he's a, making a rub making a rub He's about 70 yards at that point. I'm like, all right, hand me the camera. Get your lawnmower ready. I get the camera. Five minutes of battery life on it. <laughs> so we're now we're in the process of handing the camera over to me. I put my bow down. Now I'm videotaping. 
Jed's in the process of because you had your you didn't have an arrow knocked or anything. No, I did have an arrow knocked. I knocked it off, mm-hmm. trying to because I'm reaching for a battery with my left hand, reaching for my bow with my right, and I'm coming at it from like the wrong angle, and my you know I'm paying more attention to the battery than the the bow, and my hand knocks the arrow. Like, my finger hits the arrow. I was trying to, like, split it so I could, you know, keep it onto the shelf mm-hmm. with just finger pressure. Well, I hit it with my fingertip, knock that down. So now I take my other hand and grab the arrow as it's falling. While I do that, I hit it against the limb of the I, bowl. I thought he I thought he dropped, like, rattling antlers. It just sounded like some, like, tickled, like, rattling antlers, kind of. But it wasn't good because... There, there were two fawns in the uh, yeah, woods. Yeah, I can't remember if the fawns were there yet or not. They were. They for sure were. Okay. That we so, yeah, hadn't seen. He locked down on us, and then they were locked down on us, too. When he, And they were like 40 yards, 50 yeah. yards away. And thank God there were fawns, because if they weren't... If they were mature does, we were yeah, toast. we were done. So, all this is happening. The buck slowly moves up to those fawns. I think he checks both of them. He's grunting. Um, we get some video of that. I don't know if I haven't really checked the audio yet on that, <clears throat> but I'm like, okay, I'm gonna need that battery, Jed, because he's at he he's moved quite a ways now, and I really still don't think that he's gonna just come right down the pipe either, because where we're set up is a finger that runs off, and we have fields all around us, and I never hunted that like exact spot. I didn't know how much they filtered through there, but now they I know and they do. So, he starts walking at us. I'm well, sitting there. Be- before that happened, the does that he, you know, checked, or the fawns that he checked, they worked back down to where he came from. Mm-hmm. So, And that's, you know, like right, 70 yeah. yards they, down the hill. So, mm-hmm. we're, we're thinking, well, he's obviously going to go back the same way he came or just leave, you know. And all of a sudden, finally, I reach into my pack and I know that there's one fully charged battery for sure. And one unknown battery life in there and I finally get a hold of them and I'm just like well I don't know which one hand them to him I'm like good luck you know 50 50 shot does the battery switch it literally as a battery switching like click click battery in I look up he's he and he starts his beeline towards us on a trail I click it, battery in, turn the camera on, turn it to him, and literally that's the start of the, sh- the kill shot, which is only like a minute long until the, the shot happens. Well, I mean, he comes on a beeline for whatever reason to exit that finger out into the cut cornfield, which we'll get into in a little bit. And he walks within 20 yards. He stops. I think we both have the same thought. I'm saying, are you going to shoot him? Jed, while I'm saying that, is saying I don't have a shot, and then he takes I don't know five more steps, and we we, we stopped him, and yeah, I, I gave him two, meh, which I hate doing, but he, he was moving at like if he would have been slow walking, I am a proponent of taking a slow yeah. walking shot at under twenty yards because you do not have a duck factor then, like a, a deer that's walking does not, in my experience anyways, does not duck, you, you know, like. Crouch Definitely at, not the, as at bad. the shot, right? They might. They, in my experience, they freeze, yeah. but they don't duck. And by the time they like would duck, the arrow's already to them. But he was moving. He was just moving too fast. So I gave two, meh, and then Taylor got aggressive with a meh, <laughs> and he stopped. And I was already at full draw and picked a hair and let it fly. And he ducked, and I actually ticked a limb. And as the arrow went in, my first thought was, oh, shit, that's high. And I saw the arrow sticking out the other side, which looked good, you know, but it was also a split second because now he's running away. And he, like, he looks fine as he's running away and, you know, makes a loop and turns a corner. And and my first, like, still at this point, I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in no man's land. You know, I'm above the lungs, below the spine, like, oh my God, what did I just do? And uh, we listen, we hear some crashing, but... But it wasn't crazy crash. It It was still like... like, It was like, like in my mind... Like a deer running through brush. Right, which is a plenty down there. Yeah. 
And knowing that, I'm thinking, oh, my God, there he goes, down into that ditch and out of our lives forever. Like, this is going to be a terrible blood trail. And uh, we we did a post, uh, post-shot interview and rewatched the footage, and every time we rewatched it, I got a little more confident thinking, no, nah, he's toast. And uh, we hung around until dark that night because obviously we wanted to pull off a double. Um, we saw some more crazy action, little bucks running does around, does just running wild mm-hmm. for unknown reasons. Well, probably around 20 deer we saw. Yeah. In a... And it's not like, I mean, it's an obser- kind of an observation area. You can see a long ways, but it's not like you can't see like 700 yards. Right. Like everything that we could see, I would say, was within 100 yards. Oh, yeah. And then I think every every deer we saw at some point came to within bull range. Pretty, yeah. Pretty, and then if not, pretty close. I'd right. say that small buck that was pushing everything was probably the only one that yep. never did. Yep. Um,. But yeah, so long story short, we go back to the house, review footage, which is one of the nice things about actually videotaping your hunts is it's insane is how much you learn from the mm-hmm. sh- video. It's an, it's it's invaluable. Yeah, you can say what you want to say about videotaping hunts, like oh it cost me a hunt, it cost me this. Well, I'm telling you something right now. If 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 we didn't have that video of that hunt, our fucking thoughts would have went wild yeah. for those two hours in the stand. After that, we may have not gone after it till the next morning. Probably not. Because I think. We, you had no way of knowing. No. No. Because we would have went down there. We would have saw some blood. We would have never found that arrow because we did not think the arrow was right. where it was going to be. Because right. the arrow went flying out of him. Yeah. We found that in video. Right. So we're, we we take it back to the big screen, plug you know, plug it into the TV, watching on that, taking it frame by frame. And as he's running away, because I knew that my arrow poked through the opposite side because I saw it you know, on the shot. I saw that it poked through. And then that was all I knew. Well, watching it frame by frame, you see my arrow twirl over hit the buck's back. And it's like, oh, interesting. It got pulled out. So we're thinking, and even in the video, we're thinking, oh, it's in the cornfield somewhere. We get down there, we're looking for blood, and it's like that thing probably flew seven yards. Like it was seven yeah. yards above the trail probably. Where Summer salted it. in the video. Mm-hmm. It was insane. Mm-hmm. It was actually, yeah, it was actually back up the hill a little ways. Yeah. Somewhere we would have never looked. Like, no. No. Wouldn't even thought to look. Um, But <laughs> that's why I always laugh at people. Like, oh, you guys, you guys, big video tape. Like, he's like, the screw video tape and it ruins more hunts. Like, yeah, motherfucker. Like, I will take a, I will take shooting a buck on a video and being able to review your footage and where your shot is and knowing exactly your game plan for your blood trail. Than not shooting it and possibly costing you a hunt someplace. Like, and I, I can't even say it's ever really costing me that many deer. I don't think it's like, cost me any ever. Like, yeah, having two people in a tree together, but like, are you playing the wind correctly? Like, are as long as like one isn't like 10 feet higher than the other, your wind streams are going to be pretty much the same. Your scent's going pretty much the same place. If you aren't playing this, if you aren't playing the wind correctly, you're screwed anyways. Yeah, and another big thing is, if you can get footage of it running away, you can tell exactly what tree it ran by. You know that aids in the uh, in the tracking process greatly. In this instance, it ran into a wood, or well, it ran back onto the, the logging road area. We knew that, but we didn't have any landmarks to really. We just knew it took a hard right once right. it got through the woods, which I we actually thought it would kind of kick back. It just actually took like a straight right turn mm-hmm. from the field. Um, but, I mean, it's invaluable pretty much. Think about how jacked up you are when you shoot a deer. You're ramped up. If you have someone else with you, they're ramped up. You aren't thinking clearly. The fact that you can come back, put it on a TV, even in the tree rewatch it, and slow it down is invaluable. To track jobs like it's insane <laughs> so anyways we get uh i'm gonna have to give weston a shout out here because i was really hard on him in a previous episode but uh he was the first one to agree to come help track so really appreciate that thanks weston weston larson come on come on come on mitchell and yeah and weston's brother mitchell too came along mitchell big dog at a boy appreciate it um 
like looking back, really wouldn't have needed him. It was, you know, Mitchell spotted that arrow though. He did, he did, um, and the deer. But I think we probably would have found that without him. So we're probably we're gonna come back around on that hunt. But let's we're gonna take a beer break. All right. We got our beers. I'm drinking a Hillsboro Brewing Company Joe beer. Thank you, Dane, for leaving those. Jed is drinking a... Don't mention it. They don't deserve the airtime. Nope. Let's just say I'm not happy about it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get into why we picked that spot and what has occurred out at that property recently. So to be clear, we do live in Wisconsin. We are consistently used to not a lot of deer a lot of skunk hunts a lot of low action it's just generally it's not awesome yeah we like we live in an area that's pretty much known for big bucks not a lot of deer right yeah we i mean there's definitely your share of big bucks you don't see them very often but they're there and right. we're comparable to anywhere in the country um and you just don't see a lot of deer. For whatever reason, we don't know why, this farm has blown up and there is a lot of deer. We The first night we sat, we saw 15 plus, four different bucks, <clears throat> you know, made some adjustments. And we have two main bucks in that area that are very consistent on camera, probably the most consistent um, picture friendly bucks I've had over the previous, you know, since I've been running trail cameras out there. Of a buck we named V Town. We actually saw him on hoof on the twentieth. Uh, you know, working up to a food pot. Made an adjustment on his stand there. The next night, Jed and I sat across the road to a different food plot. Saw a nice wide buck that I had pictures of from the summer working a ditch line. Went up to a scrape, hit that, and then disappeared. We thought we'd be able to get something done that night. And uh, it really comes down to there was standing corn in this area, and I think that drew a lot of them in because there is no standing corn really in the area anymore. Um, and then that corn got cut about two days before Jed's hunt. So Weston and I actually on Saturday night did an observation car sit, and we were able to see this little corner of this cornfield that we ended up sitting in. Saw between there and other another cut cornfield that we were actually observing both. Saw twenty plus deer, little bucks bumping does. I had a little hunch that maybe one of the does were possibly gonna pop soon because she seemed to be getting picked on a lot more than the other ones. So I went with it. I said we got a hanging hunt, get something in that little finger that comes up along that cornfield, and that's what we did. We went in there. We hung right on the edge of this cut cornfield, all bedding down to our north with a northwest wind and strong. And it's a very safe spot. Like we're not getting, we ended up getting busted by one doe that night, but she was just, she was just being fussy. She, she was just hanging around at 10 yards and then saw us in the tree and wanted to figure out what we were. But overall, I mean, I think it's, I think, I think it's a good telltale. You get any finger, any little woods, they're just magnets for these deer. Like they are access routes. Like the like the deer crews in this little finger come up from the woods and they come up through it and they either go to the cornfield or the other um, main field, um, which goes down into another food plot where we've been seeing all these deer. So overall, I knew there was tons of deer over there. We saw tons of deer over there the night before. We went in. That buck was walking with a north wind above a bedding area, scent checking the whole dull bedding area, and he happened to come through. And uh, it pretty much that's what it comes down to. Can you have anything else to say about that? I mean, we've been putting a lot of work in over the last four or five years out there, and Jed included. I think, I mean, I'm not saying just crops have to do with that many deer out there. Like, I, I was thinking about it with my dad last night. I don't think a fawn's been shot out there in four or five years. Yeah, that's probably a big thing. Um, well, and there haven't been a lot of does shot out there. I mean, not 
and especially Two on or that three side, a year, maybe. But but those like last year, the ones that you shot came from the other side of the road. Well, last year I shot them in the back. I shot does in the back. Dad shot a buck. Yeah, no, you shot it over by... That was two years ago. Unsets. That was two years ago? Yeah. Well, I did get one over there last year, too. Oh, okay. I had a couple of those. But, um... Yeah, I just... I mean... It hasn't been a ton of people hunting out there. I Yeah, just... There's not... We just... No one's been reckless out there for the last five years. To, just to be like clear. Like, no one's recklessly killed something. Or everything. Yeah. And I don't, I literally do not think a fawn has been killed on that side of the road in five years, at least five years. Like, because I'm thinking back of deer drives that we've done, which I'm not a huge fan of, but we do them. And Jeffrey did a great job one night, one day, had deer come, because it's impossible that it's, it's really hard to know when deer come through on a drive unless an adult's with the right, fawns. Right, right. If you see a single deer, I find it very hard to shoot. It's very, like if, yeah. if I'm concerned about not shooting fawns. Yeah. I mean, because it's, it's hard, it's hard running, to tell when they're they running. Like they, yeah. Well, you had nothing to compare them to, but like, luckily right. he was about to shoot one a couple years ago. So the adult was doe was right behind him. He's like, Oh shit, that thing's way bigger. Nice size doe. Ended up shooting that. But we, there's been a lot of those situations out there in the last few years. Yeah. You know, I don't know though. Like, is that the right thing to do in that situation? Well, if like, you want like, to, I really, I really don't think that is. I, th- I think if you, if you, if you have a doe problem, and you want to get rid of does, well, either shoot your old does that, which people claim they can tell that are dried up, which I don't understand how you no, know that. No, see, I, I would go the exact opposite way, like I say, shoot your fawn does that you know, or that your doe fawns that if you want to shoot does. Shoot your doe fawns during gun season. Uh, I don't. I don't agree with that. I think you shoot the does themselves. So right. what, what I'm saying. What, what I'm saying is, if you want to build, like you want more deer around, do you shoot the doe or do you shoot oh. the fawn? I would say you shoot the fawn. She's unproven. That doe obviously works. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. And she's already bred, most likely. Right. Yeah, I agree. But that, I think overall, the biggest thing is there hasn't been a lot of deer shot out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's a lot of bucks out there too. Like, there's a lot of two and a half year olds. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that the next farm over no longer has standing corn on it all yeah, year round. I agree that has something to do with it too. I think that farm has had standing corn as long as I remember, and it's hundreds and eight hundred acres probably between the other farm, and mm-hmm. it, none of it's there. It's all beans this year, and Puts them in the woods. In the woods, and they were around the last standing corn in the area, and now right. it's cut, and they're on it. So, it's, it's interesting. But I, I still think if you want more deer on your property, I do think it's possible over time. Even if your neighbors are idiots, give them a place to bed. Give them some food. Don't, don't shoot little deer. If you, run into so the pro- fun, if you run into the problem with having too many doe... I always, I'm kind of in the belief that why not? If you can, if, cause you like, let, make sure you know it's a dolphin. Don't shoot nub bucks. Like, but like, why wouldn't you shoot the dolphin instead of the doe that's already been bred with some of the bucks on your property that's already going to hopefully produce a buck that spring and you just shot her? Like, it, it's common sense. <laughs> but, so, our plan right now, it's October 30th. Tomorrow's October 31st. Not great weather plan. I think tomorrow's a little better, but it's still supposed to be warm. It's supposed to be upper 50s, I think. Yeah. I mean, I'm pulling up the weather right now. Pressure hanging in the 29 and 3 Pressure quarters. Pressure shitty, rain, man. Rain. That's the thing. We had amazing middle of October for weather, like huge cold streaks with big pressure jumps and... Like we saw the deer moving because of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we didn't really have too bad of a lull this year. Mm-mm. Just weather-wise, I think tomorrow is going to be decent. The first looks like to be a decent day just because it's going to be sunny. 
a little warmer than you'd like, 52. But either way, I think it's fine. Friday doesn't look terrible. Um, I mean, there's no like big big weather changes that are going to really like, ramp stuff up. I, I, I honestly don't mind this. Like, 40s and 50s. Like, just because I... I'd rather almost be comfortable in the tree, unlike last year where you had, like, the most incredible, technically, weather for deer movement, where I think it just almost got to a point where, like, I... I could... I can't sit in a tree when it's 10 degrees and it's 25 mile an hour winds. Sorry. And the pressure was, like, insane those days. So I think just take advantage of the of the sunny weather and, and get out there. So our plan, which we were just talking about that earlier today. I think I'm gonna hunt tomorrow afternoon. Looking at this weather, I'm gonna hunt Thursday morning and night, and I'm not gonna do an all day sit or anything. Um Friday the same. Saturday potentially, depending on what Jed wants to do. And now I hooked Jed in as being cameraman because we shot a, a buck on the property that we hunt. Do you think the property that we hunt had anything to do with me being cameraman for the rest of the, <laughs> this rut? Oh, he's not a bad person. Here's here's another thing. Don't be a bad guy. If someone if someone hunts, if you got a hunting buddy that you hunt with all the time, and then you kill a deer, don't be that guy that leaves. If your wife, hey, leaves, see you later. Yeah. Well, thanks for giving me my deer. No. Wife better understand. Like, chill out. Or girlfriend. Whatever. So, our tips for you. My biggest thing is what, what everybody's situation is different. If you're still considering and you have high understanding, like if you have like high flexibility on the days you get to take off, like say you have six days to take off, you haven't picked them yet, and it's over the next two weeks, pick the days with weather. That's good. You know, pick, I would say pick one of Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. It, they're nice days. They're not like, nothing's like, sticks out as great. Look at the wind. There's a lot of east winds in there. It's weird. Um, nah, it's, not, it's not really that weird, though. I no, remember. It always happens. I remember, it always happens for a little stretch. Yeah, I remember two years ago, we had like a full yeah. two weeks of east winds. I know. It was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that, too. So, look at your, figure, figure out your stands. Pick your wins. There's nothing crazy that jumps up. I, if the what if the forecast stands good right now, Wednesday, November seventh looks like to be a really good day, and then it looks like probably the eighth is going to be high pressure, but that's a long ways away. I don't know. Just for the near future, probably until our next podcast, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, pick one of those days, um, and then hunt Saturday, Sunday as much as you can. Hold tight until we get a better idea next week. That's mine. If you have your days already selected, if you're that guy that took off November 1st, if so, if you took off this week, um, which a lot of people did, or maybe people took off next week, then hunt as much as you can. The better days with wind, the better days with weather, go in deeper. Still, still be smart. Don't be an idiot. Just diving into places. Because I still think, and Jed still is the same believer, I still think November, November 1st through the 7th is a waste of time. But I may be proven wrong. Well, it's not a waste of it's time. It's not a waste of time. But it, it, the, here's how I explain it: If somebody came down, like ruler of the world came down, gun to your head, you can hunt the last week of October or the first week of November. You can't choose both. Make a decision right now. Last week of October, every time, no debate. Mm-hmm. My first question I would ask is, what's the weather forecast? If you, if you gave me a forecast and they have the exact same, I say October. If you gave me a forecast that had end of October being terrible weather and the first, I would, like, I st- I'm still big on weather, but all playing field the same, end of October, those last five days. I love them. Especially the last two years. We've seen so many big bucks. Those, it's, it's just stupid. Like, everywhere. You got to put the time in it. Cause people, I think people, like, save up for, like, the first week. And, like, don't go sometimes that last, like, five days. That's stupid. Well, I think so. I mean, you're basically gambling on if the hot dough in your area is going to drag a buck past mm-hmm. you that time. You know. That's what the first through the seventh is. Right, saying. right. Yeah. The, the last five days of October is 
I'm going to spend as much time in the woods while the bucks are running around like idiots, covering the most ground. Yeah, because they are. They're covering. They're not. I don't think they're not doing the middle of the day movement, but they're doing the. They're doing they're, like they're, they're getting the up earlier loops. and they're staying up late. Yeah. They're doing the big loop. Because they're doing like I've had like that last week I've had deer hit hit scrapes a mile apart in the same night. Like they just make a giant they hit every scrape in the area and you like hopefully you catch them either coming back or leaving early. Yeah. And like your buck was came out of a buck bedding area that I know of for years. Thick, nasty, there's always big rubs and scrapes in there. And uh, I'm guessing he was getting up early and he was just making his rounds. And he saw some does. He had hung up and got a little bit fired up. And, uh, but that's the deal with that. Like, so. Yeah. My, uh, my like favorite rut advice, I guess, would be to, you know, if you know the doe bedding areas that are out of sight of the field edge, get above them. 40 yards into the woods so you can you can still make a shot to the edge especially if there's a scrape up there but the most bucks that i've seen during the you know the pre-rut especially um that make their rounds they get they get on the uh just into the woods you know in that 20 to 40 yard range and just run that edge scent check everything yeah, I mean... So that's my favorite spot to be when the end of October shows up. Look at your prop... I'd say look at your property kind of like a roadway. Or like, how would you walk your property? If you walked a big circle around your property, or if you walked right through the middle of your property, how would you walk? Because they're getting... They're going to go the easiest access to check as many bedding areas as they can. Look, when the, when the, the bucks are actually looking, okay, like those mature deer... You only have a day or two to get them because, like, once they find her, it's over. Like, you're not going to see them, most likely, unless she, for some reason, walks by you. But those couple days, right now, and then after, November 10th through, like, the 18th, like, you have your shot. Just, I, I like to sit on those pinch points and funnels where a lot of deer come through. It's easy access for them. It's it, one way to get from one point to the next point that's easy. One way to cut a whole point, you know, like we saw that on Sunday morning. I I firmly believe he was going to cut that whole point and just circle below that, you know, with the wind the way it was. And he got, so Sunday morning after Jet's hunt, we went out, <clears throat> uh, hunted the other field that I observed Saturday night and saw a lot of deer movement. Number one buck, which would be the other buck, not V-Town, um, real big, older, I'd say he's five at least with his body um just a giant I, I just a giant frame on him nothing like he's not like crazy he's not gonna score like 180 or anything but real nice deer and we saw him just absolutely like making a horrendous ruckus walking through the woods like yeah he he wanted his like presence cow. known like sounded like a cow just right inside the inside of the wood line but he was right over the edge where we couldn't see we heard him like, it was no, like, take a couple steps, stop, mess see what's going on. He was on a dead walk. He, like, dead walk. Went over a point, which I believe he was going to go over that. He checked the rub there. He was gonna, I think he was going to go over that point and circle a whole bedding area below with the wind the way it was. Um, and he caught something out of his eye or something because he turned right back around. We lost sight of him. And it was a 10 minute brawl with another buck that we never saw, but I can't imagine what he was because he was fighting with him. And it was like, it wasn't 10 straight minutes, but it was a solid couple minutes right away. Grunting, crashing, thrashing, break for a little bit, fight again, break for a little bit, fight again, deer grunting everywhere. Like it was insane. One of the crazy, my craziest experience I've had in the woods. So, but I think that deer right there was, he was, he's a long ways away from any picture where I've had pictures of him before. And he was trying to get back to his bed, but he had probably made a giant loop at night and was late. And he still, I I still think he had a ways to go to get back to his bed. But 
<clears throat> like that's when you catch them. And we if we were in a spot where we have the we have the area picked picked out. Like we're gonna be back there at some point. But like that spot makes a lot of sense. Like right inside the wood line, easy access for him. He was cutting a lot of ground. He was covering a lot of ground in a short period of time, pretty much. And he was checking. Checking a lot of bedding areas on the way back to his bed, and that's what, that's what they do all night. And they, but this time of year they get caught up and they get late, and that's or they or they leave early. Like that's when you can get them. So Jed's biggest thing is the forty yards in from the woods. I say just anywhere in that forty yard range, really. Um, biggest any funnel or pinch you find, dull bedding. And and don't ignore the saddles that cut up over points either. Yeah, that's exactly what he took up. Right. And I think the biggest thing is throw your trail cameras away. All they're going to do is piss you off. My biggest thing is I use them for now. I leave them out. I use them for next year. I don't care. I don't check them. I'll check them when I walk by them. But, like, if you think that you're going to check a trail camera and think that that block's going to be there when you're sitting there, you're sadly mistaken. Unless you have a um, cellular camera that... Cause I, I mean, there's something to it. Like if you if you get pictures and that are sent to your phone, and there's like four bucks running through there in the morning, there's probably a hot dog in the area. So, get your ass to that stand. But anything else, man, on the white tail front, it's gonna be a fun couple of weeks. I know that we're excited. I hope everyone else is. No, I think I'm good on the white tail front. A lot of pressure off Jed. A lot of pressure off Jed. Yeah. The- I, I honestly think that's the first buck I've shot with my bow in six years. That's crazy. You weren't hunting like super hard a few years ago. Last couple no. of years, all you did. No, yeah. Um, that and I kind of like last year. I probably wouldn't have shot that buck. Right. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure I passed two bucks that were very equivalent to that deer. Mm-hmm. Um, but making the move to trad bow and just not killing a buck for that long. Do you where, feel like next year you're going to be more selective now? God. Because you've killed him? Do you, no. No, I don't. <laughs> that was so much fun. Like, I think I got to get two to three more of them under my belt before I get a little more selective. I'll, I shouldn't, like, I will be more selective than I was this year. Like, probably not drawing down on the first fork that walks past like I did this year, but not letting the deer that I shot walk next yeah. year. He's not, he's not a bad deer. Like, there's so no. many people that would be so happy with him. Yeah. Like, probably the biggest deer they ever shot. A lot of people. Mm-hmm. But he's like a, you know, typical three and a half year old. Southwest Wisconsin, Wisconsin buck. Wisconsin buck. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. He's... Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not sitting here with with kill remorse in the least. Like, yeah. I will brag about that until I'm 80 years old if I live that long, you yeah. know. And it all comes down to, like, what makes you excited. If you, right. I, let me tell you, I'm videotaping that buck running away, and I look over to Jed, and the guy is shaking like a goddamn leaf in a tree. <laughs> I was so jacked up. Like, you don't have, there's no second guessing after that. No. Like, if you get that kind of reaction out of you, then you did the right thing. Yeah. Like, I've, I've always said, and I don't know if we've had this discussion on the podcast or not, but, like... I will not judge a person based on what they shoot as long as their reaction is pure bliss. Like, if you shoot a fork and you're bragging about it to me and are happier than hell about that fork that you shot, I'm happy for you. Good for you. Like, I do not care what people shoot unless they shoot an animal and then are, like, sad about it. Like, yeah, you know, I kind of wish I wouldn't have shot this. Then, Then don't. Right, and the, and half the time they they were probably excited when they shot it, but they feel the need because like we hunt a lot, they feel the need because that's how we are in the society of hunting right now. That like oh we're t- they're talking to like us like they know we hunt a lot, so they have to like make an excuse for the deer they shot. Like no, I tell every single person that comes up to me, they shot a deer, and I, I had a lot of people that, like oh well, yeah I probably should have let him go, but you know I thought he was bigger. Why? Why? Were you sitting in the tree after you shot shaking? Like, were you, what, did you have a huge adrenaline rush? Like, were you excited? <laughs> if the answer okay. is yes, then you yes, should have then shot. Then don't make an excuse to anybody. No. Nope. Like, and if anyone has, 
If any, if you're a guy that re- literally says to people, you should have let that thing grow. The guy that goes, well, that thing would have been nice next year. Shut up. Unless are you gonna Are you like- gonna fucking capture the deer and make sure I see him next year? Are you? Are you gonna put a fucking tracker on him and make sure he comes back here next year? Okay, if you were gonna tell me that deer makes it through gun season, comes back and meets me the same day, the same stand, same opportunity next year, I'll let the fucker pass. But unless you are, what, shut the fuck up and mind your own business. What about all the roads it crosses in its life? Yeah, you know, like does he get? I don't get excited. Like I, I saw the buck that Jed shot. I wasn't excited for because I was like that. Like we have tons of those deer. Jed's carrying a fucking longbow. It's insane that he even killed a goddamn deer with that. He actually killed a nice buck with it. Like it's all about your perspective of your deer. And pe- if you are a person that makes people feel bad about deer that shoot, I hate you. Shut the fuck. Get off this goddamn podcast. <laughs> Undownload it. Unlike it. Don't want you a part of it. Your breed is dying. Like you're you're the type of hunter that has caused the issue that we have in the hunting world right now. There's not enough people buying license that public land's getting eaten. You're the reason. Okay? So, that covers pretty much our whitetail coverage for the week. What's your random thought? Do you have one? Uh, yeah, I did, but I think we just covered it. How much I hate people who are judgmental about what other people shoot. Yeah. Well, you did make a rule that the random thought cannot be hunting related. Oh, I did. All right, well then. My random thought is, uh, it's it's a question, and then I have a, a. You have your own answer. Yeah. Nice. Um, what is your favorite one-liner, like of all time? From a movie? Nope. Just any favorite like statement, just a one-line statement. It can be as deep as you want. It can be as like. Mine actually is from a movie. I guess I'll give you mine, and then you can. Okay, I gotta think about it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so mine, it like. It's a life perspective, life choice type deal. It comes from uh, um, the Shawshank Redemption. Andy Dufresne said, you get busy living or you get busy dying. Yeah, I remember. That's a good movie, too. I, yeah, one, love that movie, too. Long one. Love that line. Like, it just it resonates with me, you know? Like, mm-hmm. And that, that gets down to, like, going to Wyoming just for the weekend, you know? Or making six trips to Canada this year or, you know, any of that type of stuff. Like how many times have people who, you know, like that I know, Oh, do you even have a job anymore? You know, when do you ever work? It's like, yeah, well, I guess I take a lot of time off, but you know what? I have a lot of fun. Well, yeah. And you aren't, you're responsible about it either. Like, not like you're, you're not collecting food stamps. Well, no, no, but that's, that's my thing. And, like my thing is get out there and make memories be be busy living well that is the point of hunting like you <laughs> I, I mean yeah besides besides what? eating the animal right. like what else is there besides the memories that you have like once the animal's dead you eat it it's over I love it too then what happens after that what's your what'd your what'd you what'd you grow up your grandpa hunted what'd he tell you about his stories like what <laughs> What did your dad tell you about his stories? What did your mom tell you about his stories? Like, their stories. That's what hunting is. That's what life experiences are. If you don't make memories enough to tell your kids or tell your tell people in the future, then what the hell are you doing? Okay, let me try and come at it to you from a different way. Don't be the guy who says, at some point, I'm going to do this hunt. Yeah, yeah, eventually I'd like to go and do this. Eventually I'd like to go and do that. Quit, quit being the eventually guy. Mm-hmm. Get busy living. Do it. Yeah, you're probably going to piss your family off. Like, I've got several most family members who are not happy with me right now. <laughs> Get over it. I'm living, all right? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't remember that many family Christmases. I remember every fucking deer I shot. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and I remember every turkey I shot. And right? I guarantee I remember my first bear I killed, the first mule deer I killed, the first elk I killed, and the list goes on. Right. So, unless you're going to... Have a life changing memory for me at the family Christmas. If there's a hunting trip for me to go on, I'm gonna go. Sorry, not sorry. Like <sighs> my one liner. Hmm. Man, I don't know. I just I don't I don't really live. I don't really live my life by like like models and stuff. I guess. 
I'm also like a egotistical like piece of shit. Like I, I would say like I'm more like I make my own fucking one liner. Like I live my life the way I want to live. Like I don't know. I'd say more of a life model type thing where it's like don't you can't if you're if you're you can't you definitely cannot like live your life hoping for approval of like the majority of people because I I probably did that for a while but man if you're not enjoying what you're doing if you're not enjoying like if what what are you waiting for if you have problems or if you if you don't like your job or if you don't like like the amount of money that you make or if you don't like the things that you do then why haven't you changed it like what do you want like what do you enjoy what are you good at if you're good if you have a skill in life most likely you probably have a way to monetize it which would probably make you enjoy your job more I mean that's my biggest like there I made my own fucking one liner if you have a skill monetize it or stop complaining about your job fair that's my biggest like complaint with people I worked in I worked in a fucking industry or whatever you want to call it a job field of police work where every single fucking person I talked to hated what they did pretty much like there are some freaks out there that liked it like but the simple question is okay if you don't like it what are you good at oh I'm not good at anything well what the hell have you been doing for 40 years you haven't had you haven't you haven't captured one skill <laughs> and I guess that's another thing build your skills up because they can come in use you think that was would that suffice yeah nailed it man so so biggest thing is get out in there and hunt your boss will forgive you I mean probably probably and don't lose a job or anything over it like make sure you can like live your life but like also don't sick days are there for a reason if anyone asks you tell them you're fucking sick I'm sick don't be posting on Facebook that you're in a tree though <laughs> <laughs> my random thought yeah my random thought is I despise moving I'm currently moving we're literally sitting in, in my office right now with everything packed away except this computer and these mics. Moving's yeah, the worst thing in the world. He's been uh, screaming at his roommates ever since I got here because apparently they weren't helping enough. Uh, it's in total shambles. I hope to never do this in my life, but maybe one more time. It looks terrible. Got me thinking about what it would take for me to move. A really, really big dumpster or three. I was going to say, that thing in the back, we got a dumpster, and that has helped a lot. Yeah. Because I looked at it because I've done move. I've made, you know, how many moves now over the last six years, and there's a lot of shit that gets collected. A and it, 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 I don't know where it comes from. Like, I looked around my house the other day, and I'm like, I don't need three quarters of the shit that's in here. I threw two Why garbage bags of clothing away, dude. I've that had, hasn't been worn in years. I've had two garbage bags sitting like by my door for months. Of what? Clothes. Oh. And I could do another four, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm like a big fan of downsizing now. Although I do hate losing any type of like useful item. Like if I think anything might be <sighs> useful for me in the future, I will not throw it away. It's it's terrible. Like I'm not I I I'm I like reusing tax. Like, I'm not throwing those away. All right, let's cut this off. <laughs> I'm sure we're over our time limit, and I got to piss. Yeah, I got to cut this up a little bit. But, yeah, so share, like, do everything you need to do. This episode four. Thanks for listening. Good luck hunting.